Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 28th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's tonight's top stories. Tonight, breaking news of Baltimore's mayor who ordered police to allow looters to destroy if they wished, is revealed to be a key player in the federal takeover of police. And the AARP uses a subliminal broadcast about martial law on a PSA. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I uh, worked with the police and instructed them to do everything that they could to make sure that the protesters were able to exercise their uh, right to free speech. Uh, it's a very delicate balancing act because while we uh, tried to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. That was Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake making that absurd statement heard around the world, uh, basically that she allowed violent mobs to have a safe space to destroy things. And that's exactly what happened. We saw things kind of kick off on Friday night. And once again, things got really violent and out of control after the funeral for Freddie Gray. We still don't have any answers as to how exactly did his spine get severed uh, once he was in police custody. The cops, of course, still have not come forward with any answers. So the crowd, once again, got a little ratcheted up, and things got a little out of control. But what do you think is going to happen when you basically come out on television and say, we're going to step back and give you a safe place to destroy things? But not only that, now police are actually talking to some journalists there. Uh, police officers in Baltimore uh, said that they were ordered by the mayor not to stop looters during yesterday's riots. So not only are they giving a safe space to destroy since p last Friday, but the police are also told to, to just fall back. And so, you know, we can see the devastation that's happened there today. There are tons of burnt down buildings, a lot of vehicles set on fire, hundreds of injuries and arrests were made. Uh, you can see Paul Joseph Watson's full video there in that article that's up at Infowars.com. But why would you do that unless you want to incite violence, unless you want people to feel like they just have free reign over the city? Of course, you don't want to have a lot of militarized police coming out and attacking people. So I see where the mayor might be kind of skirting around uh, some controversy there. But no, this is actually breaking at InfoWars. The Baltimore mayor was a key player in Obama's federal takeover of the local police. Rawlings Blake was one of three mayors who provided broad input into President Obama's task force on 21st century policing. This advocates the federalization of police departments across the country by forcing them to adhere to stricter federal requirements when they receive funding. And of course, that's what we saw following their investigation of there in Ferguson. Now, she said in written testimony before the task force, the federal government can be a strong partner in our efforts in building better relationships between the police and community. So, of course, that would explain her inaction to stop this rioting when it began by allowing this to spiral out of control. Her and her friends there at the Justice Department can use this unrest to justify the expansion of the federal power into local law enforcement. And, of course, it would funnel more money into the mayor's programs. So there again, this is what this is all about. They're basically exploiting the very real feelings of the people there on the streets in Baltimore, exploiting it for government expansion. And it's really kind of such a shame because they have no idea that they are being played like pawns on a chessboard to do the king's bidding. Uh, and they're, they're basically, their protests are going to be used to spark nationwide civil unrest. And of course, that's going to broaden federal control. That's the answer. Problem, reaction, solution. Now, Matt Drudge is known to tweet ominous warnings to America, and he did that once again. He said, everyone in America needs to stop and take a deep breath with the Baltimore riots because America could fall. And really, this is just the beginning, unfortunately. Uh, an article I read yesterday from Truthdig called Rise of the New Black Radicals. 
Uh, it is a really good article, and it talks a little bit about some of these groups. Uh, the writer speaks with uh, some of these new black militants, he's calling them, and he says that they understand that the beast is not simply white supremacy, chronic poverty, and the many faces of racism, but the destructive energy of corporate capitalism. Capitalism? Hmm, I wonder where they got that from. I thought this was about black lives. Now they're fighting against corporate capitalism? So obviously we're seeing some meddling there. Now t Bo is one of the people that he speaks with. He's a hip hop artist from St. Louis and one of the founders of this group, Hands Up United, uh, which was created in the wake of the murder of Michael Brown and Ferguson. And he says he thinks it's gonna be a lot worse this year than it was last summer. He said people have become more radical. They've realized the power they have. They're not afraid of the police or the state, but you also have a police and a military force that have been training for a year to deal with this type of circumstance. So I honestly think this summer is gonna be worse. More violence from the police, and this time, you're not gonna have a group of people who are just gonna stand around and take it. Now you're gonna have people that are actually gonna fight back instead of just being peaceful protesters. So here, these are words coming from one of the founders of Hands Up United, which is one of these groups, uh, one of these of groups of young activists that formed there last summer following everything that happened in Ferguson. And he is warning about coming unrest and basically saying it's it's going to happen. And here he's organizing all these protests that are going on around the country. Now, if you look at their website, uh, Hands Up United, this group quickly built alliances around the globe with not only Brazil, some countries in Latin America, Europe, uh, also Palestine. You'll recall there was people nationwide holding up Hands Up Don't Shoot and, and telling America that they were standing in solidarity with us that we were you know, finally standing up to our tyrannical uh, police state. The point is, is that this is not just one random group that's warning about coming civil unrest. This is a group that's got global ties. And you think, well, these are just a group of hip hop artists there in St. Louis that just all of a sudden now they have this really snazzy website. Snazzy websites are very expensive. Where do they get the money for this website to travel around the country? to send outside protesters to some of these protests going on around the nation. Where are they getting this funding? Well, there you'll see at the bottom of the website, um, and I will link all this research underneath this video, but they have ties to the Open Society Institute, which is of course, once again, George Soros. Ah yes, George Soros, the billionaire philanthropist who somehow always has his hands in civil unrest that's happening around the globe. Now you remember him, he admitted uh, in so much as the responsibility for the coup and mass murder there in the Ukraine. He told CNN that he had established a foundation in Ukraine that ultimately contributed to the overthrow of the country's elected leader and the installation of a junta handpicked by the State Department. And of course this transformation led to fascist ultranationalists controlling Ukraine's security services and other coup leaders there were working with the FBI and CIA. So this is what he does. I mean, he has a long history of openly funding civil unrest around the globe. He gets the people to do his dirty work and then he can swoop in as the savior and install puppet regimes. And it's not as if he's just this lone evil mastermind. He's part of a larger global alliance that is working toward this one world government. Um, but on the ground, the protesters, they don't realize that they're being played. They don't realize that they're falling right into this strategy of pressure from above and below. Uh, this is basically a strategy where they'll deliberately create a problem and then offer only those solutions that result in the expansion of government. So when you see stories like George Soros investing $33 million bankrolling Ferguson demonstrators, creating an echo chamber, which means that it's gonna keep these events and messages at the top of the news agenda uh, in order to drive these national protests. When you see stories like this, he's not investing $33 million because black lives matter to him. This is part of a bigger play going on. He's doing this to foment civil unrest around the globe, just like in the Ukraine and elsewhere. Now, Adon Salazar just posted this article. Once again, we see some Soros group advocates 
welcoming violence against cops in Baltimore. The Open Society Institute actually tweeted these things out. So these are social media pages run by the George Soros founded Open Society uh, Foundations, and they're appearing to justify violence. And one of the articles that they tweeted out uh, is talking about the perfect response to anyone calling for nonviolence in Baltimore. They use an alternative uh, headline that says the important thing everyone calling for nonviolence in Baltimore fails to say. Uh, basically, the article, the gist of it is that there was no official appeal for calm when Gray was being arrested, advocating what is going on there. But of course, we know the perfect response to looting and rioting and civil unrest is going to be an even more heavy handed police state. Now, take a look at this passage from the Capitalist Conspiracy Booklet written in 1971, okay? This was written in 1971 by G. Edward Griffin. On page 35, it says, if those who seek world dominion can stimulate leftist mobs into violent confrontation with local law enforcement and also provide exhaustive news coverage so that the entire nation can see and tremble, then the peaceful and freedom-loving majority can be programmed to accept a vast expansion of government powers and even a national police force offered supposedly to end the violence. Is that not exactly what is happening right now? Problem, reaction, solution. So the protesters, they do not realize that their very real anger is being exploited to do all of the dirty work. I mean, all you have to do is just remember how sketchy and obvious it was when they were about to re reveal the Michael Brown verdict in Ferguson. It was just so obvious. They kept all of the agitated crowd there waiting for hours until it got dark. And then they revealed the verdict in such a way that it really agitated the crowd even further. It set people off. And then, of course, the riots were shown on television. They played all throughout the night, 24-hour news cycle for weeks, just showing the devastation. And the National Guard actually stood back. And they allowed all of that to happen. And people were saying, well, why'd they call the National Guard in if they didn't even do anything to stop the protests? And it's because they wanted people to see this chaos all night long. America's attitude quickly shifted from support and saying, we need to do something about the milita militarized police, to then saying, where's the National Guard? Stop these people, protect everyone from all that property damage. It completely changed the narrative, and that is the same exact thing that is happening again. Except this time, the mayor came right out and said, we gave them a safe space to destroy. And so this time, the mayor comes right out on TV and admits that we gave them space to destroy she tells the police to stand down and then so allows these things to get crazy as expected so that she can declare a state of emergency and then call the National Guard in. Problem, reaction, solution. It's we're seeing it over and over and over again. And that's what they're trying to prepare the rest of America for. That's why you see these things like Jade Helm. Right? You can look back, Operation Garden Plot. Look at their trigger warnings. Now, we've talked about Operation Garden Plot in the past. It's the U.S. Army's 1968 civil disturbance plan, and it's the plan to respond to major domestic civil disturbances within the U.S. Okay, so they've been had this in place, obviously, since the 60s, civil rights movement going on then, but all the stuff is happening once again. It's all this uh, racial tension. So same thing happening again. And look at what they s consider indicators of potential violence. And tell me if this does not sound like 2015. High unemployment and increased crime rates among minority groups, protests, declining rapport between local officials and minority groups, protests by minority groups to such conditions as slum living, segregation, lack of jobs, and police brutality. So now we have groups being funded on record by the globalists saying that activists are preparing for even more unrest and they're also preparing for the violence and state oppression that's going to come along with that civil unrest, the backlash they're going to be receiving from the police and the National Guard. They say, we don't know what, what it's going to look like, but we know it's going to be a lot worse than what you saw last summer. That's why training.